Okay, good morning, everybody. It's Peter here from AJS. And once again, it gives me great privilege to take you into a jewelers workshop somewhere around Australia. And this week, we're going to sunny Tasmania. And we welcome once again, Jackie Rivens. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Good morning. Very well. It is winter. Great. That is harsh. Mind you, the days are beautiful here in winter. Sunny. It's not just hot. that they're very sunny. short, so there's not much of them. <laughs> yeah. And great to have you back on board again today, Jackie. Thank you. And today we're going to show people how to dop a stone for cabbing. Would Correct. you like to start with explaining what dopping is? Certainly. So as we've seen in my other demonstrations of cutting stones, when you've got wheels that are turning and fingers that bleed, it's best not to get too close to those diamonds on those wheels. However, you can, with large pieces, get close to those cutting wheels as you're going. But when you're doing really tiny little things, best not to get your fingers too close. Great so, suggestion. Mm, yes. Um, that's why most jewels have got really, really bad nails <laughs> and um, really short ones because often in frustration, we'll go, oh, just get that bit. Um, yeah, and it takes it off between that and the, the rotary tools. Um, so dopping is when we put a stone on top of a stick. Now, obviously, it's a bit hard. How do you do it? How do you get that onto there? Some people do use glue. I've never used glue in my 30 plus years of, of doing this, but we do use wax. So we have wax on the top and it's not just beeswax. You can't use a candle. So dopping wax is beeswax with a few other things in it the main ingredient being shellac and if anybody's a cross-dresser and likes doing woodwork as well um, shellac is what we use for french polishing and it's little flakes like such and that creates the stickiness um, and the firmness of the wax so if that was a wax candle uh, or candle wax um, or beeswax I wouldn't be. I would be able to press my nail into that, but this I can't while it's while it's hard. So the wax comes in different forms. You get different bars of it. So one that I can't find very often anymore is this one, which is brown wax, and that's got the lowest melting temperature. That's sixty, about sixty to sixty-three degrees, depending. Um, I think I've had this little guy for a long, long time. I think that's over 20 years old. They don't go off. So don't worry about that. Um, they do melt a bit when you're transporting them or having them too close to hot things on the bench. But again, that doesn't bother them. Um, you then get green wax, which is about from 63 to 65, um, depending on the manufacturer. Um, that one is most favourable for opal setters. Um, I've got no preference between this one and the red wax, uh, which is this guy that goes up to about 70, that melts at about 70. And you've got the black wax, which we use when we're faceting, that's um, 77 degrees. So, so, Jackie, the melting temperature, uh, yes. what importance does that have? Well, it's how, it's how pliable it is when you're putting the stone onto it. So as you'll see in a bit, we're going to be melting the wax, heating the stone, and then applying a heated stone to heated wax. And although um, Australian opals um, can take all of that, some opals around the world, the other little supplies of opal in the world, um, they've got a little bit more of a higher water content, so they can crack. So if you're doing, say, let's for an example, an Ethiopian opal um, or, or bar opal from... Australia, I'd probably lean towards 
Are you there, Peter? Yeah, I am. We just had some internet troubles by the looks. Um, yeah, we're still still having a couple of issues. Would you like me to continue or would you like to reset? You okay? I'll just do what Pom does and have a cup of tea. (laughs) <laughs> okay, we'll um, we'll persevere, and I'll let you know if there's an issue again, and we might have to restart if that's the case. Yeah, okay. apologies for that, viewers. All good, okay. man. Yep, this far away. Lovely. So there's different ways of heating the wax. We've got to get it onto the stick to start with. Now, I might just start with the stick. Lots of different sticks. It comes down at the end of the day to your hands, your comfort, your machine. So as everybody's seen me cutting on on one of my machines, I like a stick probably about four inches, maybe six inches, but no, no, no longer, because I want that ability to work it against that wheel. And if the tray is hitting it, then you haven't got that control. So work out with your machine what what length of stick works for you then according to what stone you're cutting what thickness of stick now if anybody goes to my instant has a look at the little blue turquoise that i did in a gold ring probably 15 or so years ago going around on a little spinning wheel on the insta i cut those one millimeter stones on the end of matchsticks that i had to carve down so you can go from a tiny little stick or a toothpick like if you cut a toothpick cut the cut the point off and make yourself a nice level surface then you can dop a stone onto that it's really good for inlay work or intarsia it's just really really fine tiny little stones if you're cutting a great big pendant like that in a piece of quartz then you're going to want a bit more of a surface area to hit that quartz if we're doing that on a little stick like that, it's going to have a problem. It's not got enough area to actually hold that piece of quartz. You're cutting a tiny little opal like these guys. Then you're going to want a stick probably that, that big. Guess what that was once upon a time? <laughs> Job stick. <laughs> so lots of... You, once you start dopping and once you start cutting stones, you will never throw a round piece of wood away again, whether it's the end of a paintbrush, whether it's the end of a pencil, whether it's the pencils that you get at a certain brand of DIY shop. Um, chopsticks are really good, really cheap. Um, skewers, all sorts. But, you tend to be, become a little bit of a hoarder of little sticks. I can see that. <laughs> because you'll get that stone and you go, oh, it just needs to be that side. And also, depending on your hands, you might want something that's a little bit more comfortable. So, again, if you're a bit of a crossdresser and like woodwork as well, you might like to turn yourself something like that. Sits in your hand comfortably. You can spin it quickly. Um, so, you know, all sorts of things. Old jeweler's file handle. Don't use that end unless you take the metal off, but you can use that end. And again, you can spin it quite easily in your hand against the wheels. Close, I went through a phase. Shush. <laughs> um, close pegs. Oh, the old fashioned sort, just cut the, cut the little, um, there's a round bit at the top. Here we go. The round bit at the top, just flatten that off or cut it off. And, um, perfect top stick and at the time I had um, this is when I was still in New South Wales I had a, a rail that they used to just go boom 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 and so I could just pull them off as I went um, so not as silly as it looks so 
you know, you have something like that and there's an, there's an opal waiting to be done on that one, um, it's easy on your hands. Having said that, it does make a lot of difference when you're doing 30, 40, 50, 100 stones in a day, um, your comfort, but also the rate of spin. And if we go back to physics a little bit, the rate of spin on that, if I'm turning that, I just put that little demonstration down here for students. If I'm spinning that, it's, it's going quite quickly. If I'm spinning that, it's slower because of the radius that I've got to turn here. So when you're doing a lot and lot of cutting, um, and if you're doing a lot of cutting, you're probably not watching this, but because you're already doing it, you're too busy. <laughs> um, the, the, the thinner the stick, the better, as long as the most important thing is that it holds your stone that you're doing. Are you with me so far? We are. Shall we Very get into cool. it? If you, if you do, and a little tip, if you do decide to cut a bunch of stone, a bunch of sticks, tape it up. Don't sit there and do it one at a time. Tape it up, put it through your little saw that way so that you, you're getting a lot done at once. Lesson learned. Um, so we get our stone onto our stick and how do we do that? How do we go from stick to stick well we melt the wax now here's a bit of a history lesson and uh, any any long-term cutters will, will have a trip down memory lane here we basically use a torch of some description a heat source of some description when i'm doing it in a big way i've got a big old ultrasonic that only has its heat heat that works now so the wax goes in there and I can just pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. Um, something like this is perfect. Um, this might be for omelettes or pies, but for <laughs> us, it's wax. And um, that will heat nicely there. I can put the wax on, on 20 dot sticks in a, in a minute. Um, so nice and easy, and you can heat your, your stone on the edge here. Failing all of that, the majority of people that are part-time cutters or people that just need to do the occasional thing, we use one of these guys. This was my original. Yeah. The original Vegemite jar with the metal lid. You put a hole in the top, you put a knot in your, in your wick. It's, you do that, and it's low tech. You pull the little wick out a little bit, and away she blows. So you put the little, and there's your little flame. Happy days. So that's what we saw. Oh, it still on. works, Jackie. It still works. I'll still show you. So you're going to heat your wax, and um, it will go from being very dull to being very glossy you don't want to boil your wax you don't want it to be fierce you just want that gentle heat if you haven't got asbestos hands have some water on your fingers and then you can mold that wax onto the, the stick a little bit better than that is and what you're trying to achieve is a gentle slope um, from the stick Give it, give it some room and then build that wax up to the top. So if we were doing a new one, thank you for the memories. So we <laughs> went from that back in the day to something like this. Again, this has just got methylated spirits in the bottom. Um, if you're only doing it one occasionally, then empty your metho out of, of the night time. Um, and do remember safety. Don't put any metho rags or any metho anything into a bin overnight. It is combustible. Um, make sure they go outside. Um, fill that with metho. There's your wick. This one you pull up at the beginning of the day or beginning of your, your start time. And that was a good cap to go onto there. Why I'm showing you the good cap is because that will keep that methylated spirits in there. Unlike these guys, which a lot of people go for these. I don't. I 
it was a hate relationship from day one with these guys. Um, they do leak from here. Now, these are designed so that you can put it on an edge so that your flame will come up. So you've got a little bit of working area. Sorry, don't see the point. Um, was that too blunt? So, um, and the, the lid, whoever designed that lid has got no idea because they've never, they've never had to go out and buy metho the next morning in the pouring rain. So that will not keep the metho in there. It's a good as an extinguisher, but it will not keep the alcohol from evaporating inside. So you will have to undo that, pour it back into a, a better jar and save the metho. This one was the, my next move up. That was probably, I don't know, that was a bit flash. I thought that was fantastic back in the day. Um, but mainly I use the heat sourced um, apparatus now, but this one I like. This one is lighter um, gas that you put into the bottom. And there she goes. Now, a lot of people just do this over, over nothingness. You're wasting that heat. In Tasmania, heat is precious. Um, so we don't, we don't waste that heat. I've found a piece of... What is that? It's not a C channel you call that? Um, I-beam, I think that's called, where it's like that. But you could use a piece of C channel. Solid steel, not going to burn, not going to catch. It's going to get warm, but it's not going to get hot. Bit of gauze on the top, and then you can put your stone on to get warm. You cannot put hot wax onto a cold stone. It's not going to stick. There's going to be no joy there whatsoever. So we need to heat, heat the stone. I might throw a few of them on there for a minute. If they're very fine stone, you put it on the fine gauze. And then we're going to start melting this wax. Can you see me all right, Peter? Yeah, we've got you. Lovely. Let's start with a new stick because then you can get the idea. Mm, it's a big, big stick for that. You know what I mean about six feet? You can never have enough. <laughs> I'm surprised you got so many and you're struggling to find the right size one for this shop. Yeah, uh, you've got to get the right size. It's all about size. Mm. So we're going to turn that up a little bit. Heat the wax. Oh, Suzanne loved your spirit collection, by the way, Jackie. Oh, look, it's, it's you know, there should be a spirit museum. What can I say? And you just sort of peel that wax. We're going to run out of fuel, aren't we? I might go back to the Vegemite jar in a minute. Try that again. Take two. So we're going to melt the wax. If you hold it a little bit away from the flame, then it's less likely to block up your flame, as in go down into the little bowl of it. Now, I am working on a slab of marble, or granite, actually. Let's be technical. Um, if you haven't got a slab of granite, lying around. Um, you can use a tile, just a bathroom, big bathroom tile or floor tile, pick up free from anywhere really. Um, you can use a sheet of glass, sheet of fibre cement, something that's, that's obviously going to be easy to clean. Um, stainless steel is good as well because you can scrape it down with a blade afterwards. Um, same with the granite. So I'm building up bits of wax on this stick. 
Again, dip your fingers in the water if you aren't as flame proof as I seem to be these days. And so I'm trying to get that sort of a shape where it comes up from the stick and then goes flat. It's like an elephant's foot. Yeah, it's a little bit like an elephant's foot. And then if you want to make it level, you can just tap it on a block. Now, every jeweler's got an old one of these lying about that's been through a flood or two. <laughs> so you sort of recycle it and you make it into something else. Um, and this is good. A lot of uh, lapidary club guys teach you to do this. I just put it on and make it like a comb and do that. And then you can do that. You get the same shape again. You can also do that on your marble or granite. Just roll it. That saves your fingers if you are a little bit sensitive. Again, you do that. So all of those methods will work. And some people that haven't got much of an eye for level might want a little bit of a set square. So you might use your little jeweler set square to do that to get that right. Because if you if you set your stone on something that's that wonky, you're going to have a problem. So some people like to have that bit of a visual reference of what is level or straight up. So once we've got that happening, I am going to go back to my Vegemite jar, let me tell you. <laughs> I think even though I cleaned this last night after I finished work, it's not clean enough. So how you how you pull your um, gas burner around and out? Let's <laughs> pull the top off. It doesn't get hot, so don't think I'm being brave or anything. Didn't want to be the favourite today, did it? Is that better? It is a bit better, but it's not brilliant. It's not how it normally is. Yeah. No, it's embarrassed. It's embarrassed of being too technical. Mm. Camera so shot. Some people, if they don't have this assembly, and normally this will heat these so quickly, it's not funny. Um, and you regulate your, your flame depth according to where the stones are and how hot you want something. So if it's opal, I'll stand here and I will be really pedantic. This is a bits of labradorite. I can burn that to a crisp. It, does, it won't bother it. Same with quartz and same with, obviously, obsidian, which will take the greatest heat of all. When some people don't want... Um, or oh, raise the flame on that little guy. When some people don't want to get their hands anywhere near the flame, or if you're teaching kids, get them to do that. Get them to put the stone into some pliers. Um, for me, it's just not necessary. So they're sort of mm, breakfast toast warm. So how warm do you need to get them then, Jackie? Well, just as, as long as they're not cold. So the coldness is gone. They are probably, I'd say probably 20, 20 degrees, 25 degrees in a room that's probably about 10 at the moment. Okay. So we get that, that um, wax nice and pliable. I can feel that the stone is warm enough. And I just keep that pressure there. You can move the wax around a little bit. Depending on whereabouts you're going to cut that stone. 
You want to be cutting stone on your blades, not wax. But you want a really, really good um, foundation. So that stone, I can visualize the middle being about there. There's the pen. So I will aim for the dot stick to be about there. I should have told you that before I did it. So let's do another one. Move those stones over. Start putting an opal on here as well. So let's pretend we're going to be cutting, say, an oval out of that. Even though it's got this little bit of a extra bit here, you got to think of that as extra weight a little bit, but we want our stone center to be there. So that's where the dot stick under here, and we face the stone, especially with opal. You heard me rave on about that. Um, but a bit with the labradorite, so really I should have had a little bit of a check with the light to where, where the flashes are. So. There's a nice flash across this piece of the Bradorite. So an oval situated there. If that's the oval back, then that's fine because I'd want that as the face. So on this one, we're going to polish the, the underneath first and then we take the stone off. We'll come to that in a minute, how to, how to do that. And then will redop it the other side. You can redop your face. So this is rough opal, nice bit of yellow. So I've polished the base of that. I've, that has been docked that side. That has been flat lapped to, to polish. Then we're going to dop this side and finish this one that way. Let's give that a little bit of a go too. So now our bread right's cold. I'll just bring it down because this this um, Vegemite jar I would normally have it under a, a lower bench of stone. So, Jackie, could you heat up your stones in hot water or not? No, not really. No. Um, you, it, it would be, it would be unnecessary. This this way is efficient. You've got the flame going. You don't need to boil a kettle. Yeah. Um, it's it's just another process. And then if you've gotten something like um, um, opal, I certainly wouldn't drop opal into hot water. Mm -hmm. Um, you're asking for cracks because you've got different substrates. So the matrix might pull it in quicker than the actual opal. You might start to get problems. This way, you're just heating it very, very gently and um, being very kind to it, if you like. Um, so, so, Jeff, you got a question. Oh, sorry, I've got a question from yep. Silver. He's asked, uh, is there a reason that the wax comes in different colours? I assume that's for the melting point? Yes, that's so you can tell the difference between the different temperatures. Um, that's all. And so if I look in my goodies box, I can tell um, which ones I, I would use for what. I have never, ever had a problem between cutting an opal, which is probably the most sensitive stone anybody's ever going to cut um, heat-wise for heating it up and whatever. Um, I've never had a problem between going between green wax and red wax. Um, other people might have comments on that, but I've maybe I've just been lucky for 35 years, but um, I've never had a problem. But that is, the reason for the different colours is 
the um, temperature melting point. It's to identify the melting point of that wax. And just uh, roughly, what are the different melting points for the red and the green and the brown? 63 for the brown, 65 to 61, some, some makes of the green, and 70 for the red, and 77 for the black. But they should it should be on the packet or it should be on the specs when you buy it from whoever is your supplier. And Oops. when I've been stuck, really, you know, like in the middle of nowhere doing some cutting or doing some dopping because it's what I want to do, um, I've had no problem in mixing it. So silver's only used the clear. green. So Say if they again. want to use... Silver's only use the green. So if they want to use a hotter one. So uh, a, lot, a lot of opal cutters will only use the green, mm -hmm. um, but I, I also use the red. But the brown is actually the hardest to get hold of, but that is actually the lowest at 63. Um, there is a couple of manufacturers out there that um, their green is 61. Um, so just check with your manufacturer or whoever's putting it together. Right. Now my veggie bite jar has just decided to have a little bit of a hissy. Let's go to another one, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky you've got a choice. Oh look, you wouldn't you wouldn't dream about this. If I had time, I'd just take that out the back and put that little fitting through the ultrasonic. But um, after I've burnt it, as in taken all the wax out, but I haven't got time. I can't do that on camera, so I'm not going to do that. So we're just going to wing it. Now, I feel how hot that is with my hand because I'm using a different, a different um, torch. Now, let's do a little one. So I'll go into my little magic box. So, Jackie, uh, Suzanne has asked, uh, does the wax get too old to work with? I've got some wax which no, has never no. been used. I've got 30-year-old wax. No, I've got 30-year-old wax, literally. And as... A lot of people know when I went through the flood, whew, I could save the wax. That's one thing I could save. Apparently, we just froze. I hope we're okay now, Yolanda. Yolanda pointed that out. We shouldn't be freezing with all those flames. No, no, I'm nice and warm here. It's pick, it's picky jobs, isn't it? Really, like I didn't really want to be um, cutting stone today. But playing with a flame all day, lovely. Let's put a little bit more wax on that. Let it cool for a second. Give it a bit of a roll. This side of it over, make it a little bit warmer. And it's all about your orientation of where you want to cut that stone, what you want to cut from it. So spend the time with your stone to work out what it is that you want from it. And if it's obviously, if it's a piece of opal, then you want to work out where that line of colour is going to come from. But that one will cut very nicely as a little round cab um, or oval once I finish that one. So she's on there nicely. 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, just to interrupt, sorry, yeah, yes. it looks as though we've got issues with the internet because it's just cut off. Uh, on Facebook, it says this video has ended. Let me just, um, but according to us, we're still going. I'll just refresh Facebook and see what happens. Yep, it uh, looks as though we're back. So, we're back. Yep, let's uh, plot on. Okay. Very good. So we've just finished that little white opal on the little end of a chopstick, or sato stick actually. So that will cut a nice oval on that one. And when you want to store your, your finished pieces, you can either just put them into a, a tub, um, you can put them into a tub of sand. You can put them into um, anything that's slotted. I do tend to use my old polishing shot um, or anything that's gridded. You know, you can stick your dot sticks in that to keep them up and level and, and um, clean. Jackie, just sorry to interrupt Did again. Did you see Looks like we've got another issue. I'll just refreshing again just to see if it comes back or not. Yep, apparently we're back. We've got people there. So if our viewers can just give me some comments. So you're losing us from time to time? We good? As far as I can see, we're good, Jackie. So let's keep going. Thank you. We're good. I do this nice opal. This is a nice piece of yellow. I'll look forward to finishing this one. So this is an old dot stick that's so when you when you want to take your stone off of your dot stick, um, you throw it in the freezer or place it. One would place it in the, in the freezer, not throw it in the freezer. And thanks so, to our viewers, they're getting us loud and clear, so that's good. Lovely. Thank you, guys. So, so you can reuse your wax time and time and time and time again. Once it come, once your stones come off of the wax, it's nice and nice and clean anyway. Um, and then, like this one's had an open on the end of it at some point. Um, now I'm just going to reset that shape. And I've probably got between the end of the stick and the end of the wax, I've probably got anywhere from mm, two to two to five mil, depending on the, the size. Now this, I'm going to hold this in my hand while I do this one. I wouldn't put it down because it's like the bottom of a boat. It's a difficult shape. So I'll press the wax on and hold it while I do so. Some people do prefer to put their stone onto a surface. Again, if, you if I took that little piece of labradorite that's nice and square off and put it onto there, this is going to get really, this is going to make, this is going to be the heat sink. So this is going to get cold quite quickly. So mo move quickly if you're trying to get your, your uprights um, nice and straight um, or hold it in your hand they're not too hot to hold in your hand that's the point but they're hot enough to hold that nicely now I've got nice control over that when I'm when I'm working that against the machines did you see the little set up for keeping stuff I don't know if that was part of the video or not um, oh. when, it, when we went off so that's you can keep it in shot you can keep it in um, sand anything gridded keeps them upright okay I think you've used pebbles out of your driveway in the past oh sorry <laughs> I'm just going to nip to the freezer I've got one in the workshop just for this um, because 
you don't want your stones mixing up with your peas in your domestic fridge. So if you're going to put it in your domestic freezer, put them in a tub. Um, but that's been in the freezer for now about an hour and a half. It will just come off. Ta-da. I'll do one underneath the other camera so you can see it because it's a little bit smaller, Peter. Just, so there's a little yeah, oval that's been done. Yeah. And it will just come off. Nice and clean. And so that one goes in your recycle tub. So it'll live another day. It's a bit, probably a bit cold now, but you, you could be very fussy and redo it before you put it in your tub. I don't know any cutter that does that. <laughs> um, because we don't usually have that much time. But that could be nicely set up for the next person that wants to use it. So there we go. So that opal's come off nice and clean, nicely polished. Um, this is an example. I put this in the freezer because this was a student that did this one. And the, the wax is very close. So if, if you've got very expensive machinery, like we all have, it's, it's, um, you don't want too much wax on your machine. So try and keep that wax as close in as possible. Don't let it over, over, overlap the outside of your stone when you're doffing it. And that's probably not even going to come off because it's, no, it's not. Now, so Jackie, I'm going to have to... Sorry, here's yes. your chance to change somebody's life because uh, Silva Go says on. that seven out of ten times I drop a stone, it will drop off. What am I doing yeah. wrong? You're not heating the stone and the wax enough. So back in, back in the day, God, do I sound old now? Um, back in the day, we actually used to dissolve the shellac in a bit of methylated spirits. And if you've got a really, really awkward stone, like, I, I don't know what I'd even call an awkward stone in my life now. But if you've got something you're really, really having a problem with, um, dissolve a little bit of shellac with metho. So just so that the shellac is just covered with metho in a little jar, stick it on the windowsill or somewhere in, in, a, in a warm spot. The shellac will dissolve. That is then called French polish. Um, you can paint that shellac on a stone, let it dry. And that will be the glue of all glues. Um, but the main problem for people that are losing the stone off of the dock is that they're not warming the stone enough. Don't be afraid of warming that stone. Um, remember that obsidian is the first, that's a bit of uh, mahogany obsidian, dunk it for you to say it. Um, obsidian is the first thing out of the volcano. It can take as much heat as you can give it. We could stick it on there and keep the heat up to it all day and it will not have any challenges with it whatsoever. So maybe start with some quartz or some obsidian or some agates, quartz family again, um, and see if you can heat it up as hard as you can and then try and put your, your wax onto it. It's getting the confidence between too hot and not enough. So um if 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 my hands are able to still pick that up there's no damage to that stone if we get a little bit further than that and maybe even i want to start using tweezers then your wax is probably going to be bubbling which isn't good either let's do that piece of obsidian just to group a point in fact i'll really prove a point for you so let's not heat this piece of labradorite at all while we're waiting on that piece of obsidian. And there is nothing more frustrating. If you've seen the, the video, I think it was in Beginners, where I put a rubber mat underneath the cutting wheels um, that that would be the way to go until your confidence is there because there is nothing more frustrate, frustrating than, you know, being halfway through a cut and the, the stone falls off for a student. It's just soul-destroying. So 
Silver says the stone is usually five seconds touch heat. So I think it's something I'm stuffing up on. Yeah, this. that's, 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 I wish I'd brought my digital on the wax gun side. in today. But, yeah, um, he thinks it, he thinks it's more to do with the wax that is, is, is that his issue is. Yeah, well, number one, use real dopping wax. Don't use don't use sealing wax. So some people will try and get away with using sealing wax. So there's two different types of sealing wax. There's the sealing wax that you use for sealing wine bottles, and that has got no shellac in it whatsoever. I'm not sure what they add into that, but um, once upon a time it was a lot cheaper, and I thought I'd do some experiments. And no, nah, do not use that stuff because it's built not to stick. It won't stick. Um, so when you crack a really expensive bottle of wine with the wax dripping down, um, it's it's going to be easy to open. If it was dopping wax, nobody would get into it without putting it in the freezer. Oh, dear. Humour. Um, so sealing wax for bottles is number one. And then there's the other sealing wax, which I used to demonstrate with how it doesn't work. Um, I've got a piece here somewhere. Um, not within grabbing range anyway. Um, you know, the one with the, it's got a wick through it and they used to do for the for the rings, sealing of leathers and things. Hold on. You know, when you used to use one of those little guys to put onto you, this is going before Australia Post, I'm sorry. On the back of your envelope. Uh, that's right, on the back of the envelope. That's mm -hmm. um, That type of sealing wax that you buy in the stationery shop, don't use that. It has to be purpose-made. So maybe he's got the, um, the wrong wax mixed up somewhere along the line. So if I try and put this piece now, onto a cold stone, not sticking, won't stick, will not stick. So even if that temperature was a little bit more up, let's just give it a little bit of warmth. Slightly tacky, but not doing it at all. This is just getting to the point where it'd be uncomfortable for me to hold and I wish I could. You could hear it. There's a slight fried egg noise, slightly, when that goes on there. And you see how it's it's still pliable. It's still it's still runny, if you like. That means you've got setting time because the stone is continuing to heat the wax. The stone is not acting as a heat sink. So when the stone is so cool that it is making the wax cold, we've got a problem. It won't stick. You need that heat in the stone to attract the shellac from that wax to the stone. And we could go and you know, throw that across the room if we were so inclined, and that would not come off. So essentially the stone has to be the same sort of temperature as the wax, is that what you're saying? Or Fair, yeah, yes. But just under, it doesn't have to be as hot as the wax, mm -hmm. but as long as the stone isn't acting as a complete heat sink. And see, that's still pliable. I can still move that wax or indent my nail into that wax purely because the heat of the stone is still there. I can still feel that's nice and warm. So how long do we need to wait before we can use that? Um, if you put that down on your piece of bench, that would be, or your, if you use your steel as a heat sink or your granite as a heat sink, 
Um, as long as, so that's cold now, that's stone, I'd, I'd take that straight to the cutting wheel. Same with that one. That's still warm. So it's just getting your confidence with your temperatures. Um, I wish I could be a little bit more specific than that, but and then if you're using, you know, heaters for your wax, it shouldn't be bubbling. It should just be, um, it, it should just be warm um, and stirrable. Usually, I don't know why this this plug isn't seeming to want to play this morning. That's not quite hot. It's getting that temperature of the the wax is fluid, but not bubbling. And when when it's boiling, also the wax changes colour. So you'll see a blackness around the wax, and you don't want that either. So this nice piece of quartz here. So if you can see, I've put the cross in the middle. And that is so I've got an orientation of distribution of how I want to cut that stone. So if we put that cross over here, then I'd be heavy ended. If I put it over here, I'd be tip ended. When you're on the wheels, cutting wheels, you want to have that flow of motion going around that stone. You also want the stone to be appropriate for the shape we're going to cut out of it. So if I was going to cut a little round piece out of this end, then I'd cut that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here trying to cut an oval or tear shape. So, or if I wanted to cut a square, I might nip that end off. So you want to be appropriate for that piece of stone. So you might go through several pieces of stone to get you know, the shape that you want. You know, I might want to do, obviously, a triangle out of that guy or a complete circle out of that one. Um, you won't, you know, because of that downward hill there, this is the only cuttable material here that could have probably come off in the, in the trim saw. Um, so, and then if you want that pattern, so we might want those purple pieces of stitch tight to be in the middle of the stone, so we'd cut that. Oh, probably an oval would, would, would make the most of that stone. If we were hunting for a, a circle or a tear-shaped tear one, we might cut, cut it out of something else. If we want, um, oh, dear idea is a howling dog there. If anybody's got creative, you wouldn't be watching <laughs> this if you weren't creative to start with. But, um, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd look at the stone and look at what you want to cut from it and what would be the most efficient thing to cut from it. If I'm heating a piece of crystal opal, something like that, um, I'm going to be over it like every second. I'm going to be there with it through that journey of heating. The quartz, I could leave it, go and make another cup of tea and come back. Quite frankly, it's not going to bother it whatsoever. Um, something like a crystal piece of opal, I'm going to, or any opal, I'm onto it. I'm, I'm there, I'm, I'm feeling it. I might have a dozen pieces on there that I'm just rotating and making sure that that heat distribution is even. Um, so it's, it's, it's a skill based on observation, observation of what you're doing, observation of the flame, observation of um, the, the temperature of what you're doing, um, and then how it ends up, how it feels on that stick. So I'm going to take that piece of crystal off of there. We'll keep this little guy here. This, it, it is incredibly slow doing it like this. When I'm using the, the heaters, I'm, I'm able to do dozens in, in 10 minutes. 
that's what you're resting your left arm on, you mean? Yes, that's my health yeah. support at the moment. <laughs> you, you can use you can use anything that heats. So you could use um, a small um, oh, what are those things that you do stews in the casserole, slow dish. cooker, slow yeah. cooker. You could use a little slow cooker or put a little dish into a, a slow cooker. Don't have to hit the hit, fill the whole thing with wax. Depends on how much you're cutting. So I would say that's at least 30 degrees, I would say. I've got my X, I can see through there. I'll put that onto there. I'm going to flare that wax out. If you feel it's wrong, don't continue. Throw it in the freezer, take it off, start again. It's taken 180 million years to create your stone. Don't mess it up right now. Well, so, Jackie, your uh, heater so, that you're leaning on, uh, what was that yes. in its uh, initial use? It's original life. This was an yeah. omelette maker. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I wouldn't make my omelettes in an omelette maker. I would be rather caught eating gravel. But, um, no, perfect for that. Any op shop, perfect. There you go. Um, no. and, and heating your stones on the edge as well. And I, I do roll my, my edges on here as well. It's just been the perfect little thing. Uh, Silver's going to buy a um, an omelet maker straight after the show. Yep, perfect. Uh, so but Jackie, you, will have to just... you also will have to regulate it. Turn it off. Turn it on. You don't leave it. Don't leave any heater on with wax. Just regulate it. So stay with it, and then when you finish, turn it off. When you're going to walk away, turn it off. Hmm. If you've got a few stones to do in a day, you're going to do all your docking yes. first. First over what was that? Oh, if you... uh, so I wouldn't. So are you saying would I would I then go and cut that one and then come back and then dock another stone? I would dock as many as I can get away within a day. So if I have got a line of of or a tub of labradorite to do, I will do that. Um, thanks to Pete and Jason, I've got a tub of. Of a serpentine and stitch type to get done. Um, so I will set all of that up as, as much as I can and then go to the wheels and just do get, it. Into it. Mm. get into it and just put the tunes in the ears and just do a day's worth of cutting. 